So we picked up some trigger fish fillets and these are really good. It's a sweet fish if you haven't ever tried it before and it's really good when it's blackened. And I am going to blacken some fish for you today. I'm going to do it very similar to a New Orleans blackened fish, but I'm going to add a little bit of a tropical or um, like a Caribbean taste to it by adding some warm spices too and I'm serving it with coconut rice and mango salsa. So here are some of the ingredients that I am going to use and I encourage you to adapt this to your taste or to your family's taste. So I'm going to make my own seasoning and I'm using some herbs um, and peppers that I dried from last year's garden. So I had some Greek oregano that I dried along with some lemon thyme. And I really love using my dehydrator to make my own seasonings. I use this to dry so many different things. I also used it to dry some smoked chili peppers. Uh, the peppers that I'm using in this blend include dragon cayenne and lemon drop and I smoked those. So here's my seasoning blend that I'm going to use. Uh, as you may notice I'm also using just a couple of allspice berries and so that will kind of give it that little bit of a jerk flavor but we're going to blacken it instead of smoking it on the grill. So I also wanted to make some mango salsa real quick. I'll show you how I did that. I just sliced down each side of the stone of the mango and cubed it right there in the skin and then kind of inverted it and cut out the cubes. And I added two small scallions along with one jalapeno pepper and some cilantro. I minced all of those very well and then just tossed them right there into the mango and gave it some lime juice, about the juice from one lime, along with some salt, tossed it real good. And I made that a few hours ahead of time um, and then into my compost bin so the food scraps can go back into my garden. Now for the trigger fish. Trigger fish has some pretty big pin bones in here, so we wanna make sure to get those out. So on the rough side of the filet, I just like to feel for the pin bones and they're really um, pretty big here. So when I fill it, I just get my needle nose pliers and hold that flesh and pull that bone out at an angle. So we don't want to use the skin side. That's nice and smooth. You can find the bones easier with your fingers right there on the rough side. And there's usually about oh, five or six of these. And so um, we'll just go in. I found another one here. Hold the flesh down and then pull it out at an angle. They can be pretty tough. It's almost like extracting a little tooth or something. And you definitely do not want to eat these. <laughs> so in we go and then at an angle give it a pull and there you go so I went ahead and dusted those very liberally with the seasoning and my cast iron skillet was heating up so I am using about two to three tablespoons of safflower oil for my skillet and that's for each fillet my skillet measures about 10 inches so I just want to make sure I have enough oil to coat it very well and then have just a little bit extra, about another tablespoon extra. And so you'll need to adjust this according to the size of your skillet. You may need a little bit less for a smaller skillet or a little bit more for a larger skillet. And I'm doing this completely different than a New Orleans blackened fish. Okay, I'm doing this a um, little bit differently. And now in goes the fish and I'm on about medium to medium high heat. You want it to be pretty hot because we're gonna um, get that blackened. That's what our point is. We are going to blacken the fish, okay? So I have found that coconut butter reacts a lot like a normal butter. So I decided to use this to blacken my fish and I'm putting it right here in the oil. If you don't put it right in the oil, it will burn. It'll not work out. So make sure you put it and the oil for it to melt and I'll leave a link up here for how you can make coconut butter at home too you don't have to you know go out and buy expensive pre-made coconut butter it's real easy to make you know if you're doing like a New Orleans blackened fish uh, that those milk solids in the butter that you dipped your fish in will brown as you're blackening it well I can't quite do it that way with this coconut butter um, so what I do is just toast off the coconut in the safflower oil 
you know, it foams up first and then it'll start to brown just like regular butter. So it works out really nice. I think it adds a lot of flavor and it's a little bit healthier too, right? So we can't go wrong with that. So once the edges of the fish have turned pretty white, then you'll flip it and you can just spoon some of that coconut butter right over your fish. Mine took about eight minutes to cook this way. My fish is pretty thick and it depends on the thickness of your fish. But I like to give it a little fill right there in the middle and see if it's starting to firm up. And if so, it is ready. Now I'm using some coconut rice, which I showed you how to make last week. It's really good, especially with a spicy fish like this. And a little mango salsa right there on the side. And of course, a little bit of lime juice as well. And now it's time to dig in. It's nice and flaky. You want it just to kind of pull apart. It shouldn't shred or anything like that. Just nice little flakes of fish. It's just delicious. Uh, you can use any kind of fish you can get your hands on for this though. It's really pretty easy little dish. It comes together pretty quick and it's delicious. So I hope you can give it a try very soon. And I have many more recipes over on my channel. You're welcome to head on over to my playlist section and check those out. And don't forget to click that little bell off to the right of the subscribed button and you'll receive all notifications from my channel. Thank you so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.